What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for part 4 of our learning to predict in Pokemon. And this final part is going to be centered around actually predicting our way through a match. So today's opponent is going to be Trainer Connor, one of my best rivals in the world. And we're, we're using some unconventional teams, so let's just go through the different steps. I said in the first video that the first thing you're going to want to do is start with the team preview screen. Now with this team preview, what do we notice here? We need to take note of any immunities. We need to take note of what do we think he's going to lead off with? And we need to figure out what the wing conditions are for both our team and our opponent's team. Now my opponent has a Tyrantrum, a rock dragon type, a Mianxiao, a fighting type, a Starmie, which is a water psychic type, a Scolipede, a bug poison type, a Pangoro, who is dark and fighting, and of course Heatran, which is steel and fire. Now immediately we see immunities here um, and Pangoro being immune to psychic and of course the uh, Heatran is immune to poison. Uh, Heatran's ability also gives it an immunity to fire and um, uh, the possible starters here on our opponent's side are probably going to be something fast like Mianxiao or Scolipede. Scolipede of course has that speed boost ability and Mianxiao is just naturally fast as a very common lead. Another possible lead might be Heatran if he wants to get up entry hazards. And of course, if we see Tyrantrum or Pangoro, we might think that they're scarfed. So those are just things to keep in mind. Um, those are, that's the way that I <laughs> looked at the beginning of the battle, at least. On my side of the field, um, I don't really have any immunities besides Ghost on my Bufalon. He's immune to Ghost being a normal type. Victini, of course, is a Psychic Fire type. Roserade is a Grass Poison type. Melodic is a water type, Hitmontop is a fighting type, and Rhydon is a ground rock type. Oh, we do have an immunity to electricity with Rhydon, but that's not going to come into too much play here. Now, the win conditions for this match. If we look at my opponent's team, he, he has three things there weak to fighting. He has two things weak to ground. He has... Hmm... He also has Starmie and so he has actually a pretty balanced team. Um, I think that out of all of my Pokemon, uh, the thing that he has most trouble dealing with is going to be my probably Victini and Bufalon. After I take out his uh, Heatran especially, he has a lot of trouble dealing with Bufalon because Bufalon also can carry Earthquake and so it can kind of just run through his team outside of his Mianxiao. Um, and it doesn't matter that Mianxiao is fast because I have priority on my Hitmon top. Uh, so his speed is kind of taken out, into, out of account there. Also, whenever you're starting at the beginning of the match and you're carrying some unconventional things, it's good to take note of those because it's less likely that your opponent will expect them. For example, I'm using an Offense and Melodic in this battle and also I'm using a uh, Choice Scarfed Victini. So, Vitini will be a little faster than my opponent might expect, and Melodic, which is commonly seen as a defensive Pokemon or a wall, will be doing more damage than my opponent expects as well. So with those things in mind, I might be able to catch my opponent off guard uh, and take advantage of those early openings in the battle. So if you have your notes ready, let's go ahead and get into the battle. Alrighty, so um, let's see what we expect our opponent to start off with. Like I said before, I'm going to guess either Heatran or Scolipede. Scolipede you typically see carrying Baton Pass at the beginning of battles, whereas Heatran would be a good lead to set up some entry hazards. Um, if he has a Scarf on Mianxiao, that might be possible too. But here we do see the Heatran, and Victini, of course, is even being Scarf, is going to be a bad matchup for Heatran. I do have neutral attacks in the form of Bolt Strike, but it's, it's with him resisting my Zen Headbutt and getting a boost from my... Uh, V create, it's just not a good idea to use any of those. Furthermore, um, it's no use to pass to, to reveal the fact that I have a scarf, so I'm just gonna switch out manually rather than use a U-turn. It's not typically good to overbreak in the early game, but here we're gonna switch out and predict him to set up some entry hazards. Most likely stealth rocks. Um, if we don't see those, if he just tries to attack right off the bat, um, it may be possible this is an office of Heatran, which will change things. But here a good switch is going to be Melodic. Um, it is slightly predictable, but it's no, again, even if Heatran has Hidden Power Grass, which is very common on Heatran, 
is not going to do very much to Melodic because of its great natural defense and special defense. So that's going to be a very safe switch that we're going to go to right now. So switching into my offensive Melodic, it may tip off to him that I am uh, not as bulky. He actually is gonna go for the Earth Power here, not using Stealth Rocks. That didn't do too much damage, uh, which is good. It doesn't really tip him off. I am carrying leftovers as well. Surprisingly, he goes for Magma Storm. So this is definitely a more offensive of Heatran. That Magma Storm isn't gonna trap in my Melodic, but this Surf here is not probably going to be very expected by him. I almost take him out. I think that was probably minimum damage there, I would guess. I don't like running Hydro Pump because it misses too much from my liking. But uh, now I imagine he's going to switch out. Even with the Magma Storm going, he has no reason to um, deal with that. So expecting to switch out, I'm going to go for Recover. And he actually brings in Starmie. So this actually has a few implications. First of all, Starmie is typically more of an offensive Pokemon. Uh, we know that it probably has a water type move. But since he brought it in against a water type, it's also very likely that he carries Thunderbolt. Now, I also know that Melodic can take one Thunderbolt, especially from full HP. Uh, we saw how well it took the neutral Earth power and um, the other moves from Heatran even being uninvested. So, unfortunately, Melodic doesn't have any super effective moves to hit Starmie with, but I do have Dragon Pulse, which is a decently powerful neutral base power move. Here, it is very uncommon for Melodic to carry Dragon Pulse. Starmie is also a relatively frail Pokemon. So, if I'm able to put it in a position where I can weaken it, weaken it or to AKO it. This is a great time to reveal the Dragon Pulse, especially because his only other Pokemon on his team, weak to Dragon, his Tyrantrum, um, will probably be unable to one-hit KO Melodic as well. So it would kind of put him on notice that I have a Dragon-type move to his Pokemon with. Now here, uh, Dragon Pulse will probably not to hit KO Starmie, but uh, he actually ends up over-predicting, which, like I said, Expecting the Thunderbolt, I think I could take the Thunderbolt. It would make a lot of sense for me to switch out, especially when I have Roserade, a grass type to switch into the Starmie to take the possible Thunderbolt or water type move. Now he does take the Dragon Pulse pretty well. It's not its not quite a 2 KO, but here we find out that he's carrying Life Orb, which is very good information because that means I will be able to 2 KO him after the Life Orb damage and Thunderbolt, as I thought, did not even do uh, half damage after um, the leftovers recovery. So now that we see his Mian Shao switching in, we need to get a little bit of information about Mian Shao. It's unlikely that he has Life Orb on it because uh, he had it on Starmie. And um, the best thing that we really had to switch in here, we even have Victini to resist the fighting type move. And we have Wolfgang, of course, which can intimidate it. I decided to go into Hitmontop just because uh, depending on what he switched in afterwards, I would have better uh, offensive momentum. Also, I could bring in some priority. But unfortunately, I decided to double out into Victini, expecting another high jump kick. I could have hit Tyrantrum with a Zen Headbutt, but I did not think that, that would KO it. So I just switched back out, and uh, that ends up being a good play because he just goes for the stab Stone Edge to hit Victini with. Now that means I'm able to get a little bit of momentum back here. He interestingly goes for the Dragon Dance, probably expecting me to just attack, although I just go for Toxic. Uh, this is a very defensive hit on top which is a role you see him on top commonly play. Unfortunately, he has the Lumberry, which heals the Toxic, which means he basically just got a free Dragon Dance off. Um, so we're gonna have to go for a few mock Punches to put him in a range, or some of my other Pokemon can deal with him a little easier. Uh, fortunately, Dragon Dance just does plus one to your attack and plus one to your speed. And since I intimidated him, he is back to neutral attack. So that means he's not going to be able to uh, KO me with that first Dragon Claw. But now he's at plus two speed, plus one attack, uh, basically the equivalent of a shift gear. And I'm going to be able to get off a total of three mock punches on him, which is fantastic. Cause now he's definitely at a range where I can finish him off with priority or um, uh, something else that can take a hit from him, like my Rhinox. So we've seen Dragon Dance and Dragon Claw from him and Stone Edge. His last move was probably just a coverage move. Unfortunately, he gets a critical hit on his Dragon Claw there. That does a lot of damage because this is an Eviolite Rhydon. Um, and so now we see his Pangoro come in. And here, I didn't really see any reason to switch out. I thought I could take a hit. And he actually ends up going for Parting Shot. So now, based on what he brings in, we kind of need to make a few adjustments to the way we play. Now, I ended up putting up my Stealth Rocks here just because Stealth Rocks are a fantastic move. Like I said in the um, previous videos, 
you want to get those entry hazards up to help pressure your opponent. They're essentially free damage. Um, plus, it's still about the mid game. Those are still going to be pretty useful. He brings in Scallopede here. Scallopede can have a, several different movesets, several different EV spreads, and lots of items. So we're going to need to see what he does to get a little bit of information from him. Fortunately, there's nothing Scallopede can really do to KO Rhydon. So I have the ability to switch out expecting something. To, I could try to predict him. Or, of course, um, I could just stay in knowing that I can basically take any hit from him and try to break a possible sash with an attack or just to get off some free damage on him. Uh, Scallopy can carry Earthquake, which would be super effective against Rhydon. Um, and of course, things like um, Rose Raid don't, and Victini, neither of them want to get hit by a Mega Horn. So we'll need to be careful when we play with some of our other Pokemon. So let's just give a, uh, let's see what Scallopy ends up going for here. Now, after I set up Stealth Rocks, that's going to be pretty good. His Heatran is going to be pretty close to dying. He actually ends up switching out. I think he's trying to predict me right there. So that's very good that I ended up staying in to set up Stealth Rocks because now Escalope is going to take 25% just for switching in. Now here he ended up switching in Widowmaker. I think we both kind of predicted things for other people, but he may have predicted me to switch in uh, right there. So that may be why he went out to me and Xiao. Unfortunately, Thornelius is unable to take a high jump kick. With that damage, it's very likely that he's banned it because it was a resisted hit. And so thinking that he's banded, I go out into Victini to resist the hit and he brings in his Heatran. I just went for Zen Head, but in case he did switch into the Heatran, I didn't want to give it a flash fire boost. And of course, Zen Head, but would also coverage, uh, get me coverage against the Mian Shao. So he brings back out the Mian Shao. Um, I must, I'm going to assume that he is banded at this point just because he went ahead and KO'd me, even though I resisted the hit and he went for Stone Edge and then switches out after he went for Stone Edge. Now, although Connor did miss the Stone Edge, it's important to note that he is using moves and then switching out based on what I switch in. Uh, that type of behavior is very indicative of a choice item being on a Pokemon. And since uh, he's been switching out against Victini, he is probably banded. And that's the type of thing you really have to look for. Now that I know that he's banded, um, I know for one, it's unlikely that Melodic will be able to take a high jump kick coming from him. Um, and also Victini will probably be very easily two-shotted by a high jump kick. So we'll have to play around that. Uh, when you figure out your opponent's more powerful attacks, it kind of changes their win condition because now we have to play around me and Shout because it's already so fast and it hits really hard. But we see Scallopy come back out here, which is fine by me really, it's a free KO. Um, so I'm going to be able to go for head charge and um, it, it hopefully will KO the Scallopede. Alrighty, it definitely does. I have a Silk Scarf on Bufaline, I believe, so that's gonna power up the head charge a good bit. And um, we're gonna, he's gonna be down another Pokemon. Now he brings out Pangoro here. Uh, the way he, since Bufalon is relatively slow, it's hard to know if he's going to outspeed me or not. Um, Rhinox actually took a hit pretty well earlier, so I was hoping he'd be able to take a Storm Throw. But of course, Pangoro has pretty high attack and Storm Throw always critical hits. And so seeing that he's using a fighting attack, I just decided to go out into Victini, hoping that I'll be able to KO it with a V create, but he barely lives because Pangoro actually has pretty decent bulk. Um, he uses Storm Throw again, which leads me to believe that he's actually Scarfed, uh, which is okay because Victini is Scarfed, Pangoro is Scarfed, and um, uh, Victini's base speed is higher. So now he's going, we're, we're approaching the end game here. I still have a couple of Pokemon left. He still has um, his Mian Shao left. Unfortunately, Mian Shao can hit really, really hard with that high jump kick. So we need to be careful playing around that. Um, unfortunately, um, we're gonna go into Melodic here. He actually goes for Hidden Power and it's neutral. So it's probably, um, I think he said it was Hidden Power Dark, I believe is actually what he told me it was, which would explain why I went for it against Victini. Um, but even so, he probably still should have gone for the high jump kick. That would have been the better play there. But still, that was a fantastic match. It was really indicative of how to kind of play around with predictions when you bring unexpected stuff, when your opponent brings some unexpected stuff. And I hope you all enjoyed this series. I had a lot of fun doing it. I look forward to um, updating it as the metagame changes and doing a little bit uh, more content where I kind of help explain how you might get into competitive battling. So if you all enjoyed this series, make sure you leave a like and um, make sure you leave comments on other uh, tips that you might have for predicting in Pokemon battles. You guys have a great day and I'll talk to you all later. Bye bye now.